Good morning and welcome to Tuesday the 1st of March 2022 to join with me Reverend Andrew for the Office of Morning Prayer. The first day of the month and Shrove Tuesday the day before Ash Wednesday. Our readings this morning are part of Psalm 89 and Paul's letter to the Galatians chapter 2. As always both readings will come up as screen share through the course of this recording. So let's turn to morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, Creator of all, to be praised and glory for ever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we awake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence, and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Psalm 89, verses 1 to 4 and 13 to 18. And the response is, Truly the Lord is our shield. Truly the Lord is our shield. My song shall be always of the loving kindness of the Lord. With my mouth will I proclaim your faithfulness throughout all generations. I will declare that your love is established for ever. You have set your faithfulness as firm as the heavens. For you said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. Your seed will I establish for ever. And build up your throne for all generations. Truly the Lord is our shield. You have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand and high is your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before your face. Happy are the people you, who know the shout of triumph. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. In your name they rejoice all the day long and are exalted in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength. And in your favour you lift up our heads. Truly the Lord is our shield. The Holy One of Israel is our King. Truly the Lord is our shield. A prayer. As we sing of your love, O Lord, anoint us with the Spirit's seal, that we may praise your faithfulness and proclaim your truth from age to age. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. And glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning as now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. St Paul writes, Then after fourteen years I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along with me. I went up in response to a revelation. Then I laid before them, though only in a private meeting with the acknowledged leaders, the gospel that I proclaim among the Gentiles, in order to make sure that I was not running, or had not run, in vain. But even Titus, who was with me, was not compelled to be circumcised, though he was a Greek. But because of false believers secretly brought in, who slipped in to spy on the freedom we have in Christ Jesus, so that they might enslave us, we do not submit to them even for a moment, so that, the God, so that the truth of the gospel might always remain with you. And from those who were supposed to be acknowledged leaders, what they actually were makes no difference to me, God shows no partiality, those leaders contributed nothing to me. On the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel for the uncircumcised, just as Peter had been entrusted with the gospel for the circumcised, for he who worked through Peter, making him an apostle to the circumcised, also worked through me in sending me to the Gentiles. And when James and Cephas and John, who were acknowledged pillars, recognised the grace that had been given to me, they gave to Barnabas and me the right hand of fellowship, agreeing that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. They asked only one thing, that we remember the poor, which was actually what I was eager to do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Well, we have an extract there from uh, Paul's letter to the early Christian church in Galatia, uh, setting out his credentials uh, against the church that was having difficulties with its leadership uh, and with certain uh, ways of thinking that were infiltrating into the church that was just threatening the, to undermine uh, the existence of that uh, young early church in Galatia. I won't go further into that. Uh, we can, if you're interested, we can read up um, history and commentaries about that. But I just want to offer a little brief reflection from that passage, reflecting on the fact that uh, this was a key moment in the uh, life and development of the early Christian church. It was clear it was a, a big meeting in Jerusalem uh, to talk through um, how. Um, yeah, the gospel should be evangel should be uh, shared with both Jews and non-Jews, and indeed what practices they should follow. A key moment, as I say, in the development of the faith uh, of the early church. And it's worth just taking a moment for us to look at key moments in our lives of faith, where we have moved on, or where something has suddenly clicked about the faith and our relating with God. It could be a person that we've had the honour and privilege to meet or to, to know, a meeting we've attended or an event we've attended or a national event that's happened that has brought faith into being for us. Because our whole faith, of course, is based on one key event, namely the life and the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to the cross to put all the effects of sin in all its shapes and forms and sizes to death once for all and to go on to his resurrection on that first Easter morn to rise again and to overcome and to give us the victory uh, over all things that would try to do us down in life. That's the key um, foundation event, of course, of our faith that we follow and celebrate in our daily lives. Thanks be to God. Let's now move on to the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Let's move into a time of prayer. And we cannot but, of course, pray uh, for two countries today. Praying, of course, for the Ukraine, for her people, and for all who are taking counsel to find a way forward, to find an end to the war that has, is happening there. And we also pray for the people of Wales as they celebrate their patron today, St. Wa uh, St. Wales, St. David's. And indeed for all Welsh people, if you are Welsh yourself, um, every blessing on you on your patron saint's day. But let us pray. Almighty God, we do pray for Ukraine, for the Ukraine. We pray for her peoples, all the turmoil, all the uncertainty, the confusion and the great upset and the danger which has suddenly descended on them. Lord, be their guide today. We pray, Father, earnestly that an end will come about to the war and the fighting going on there. We pray, Father, your blessing for the safety of her people left in the country, for those who mourn the loss of their land as much as the loss of their homes, the loss of their livelihoods, and indeed, those who are experiencing the loss of a loved one. Protect her people, dear Lord, and bless those who take counsel to find a resolution, an end to the war in that country. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayers. And we pray, Father, your blessing on Wales, the country of Wales, the Principality of Wales. Pray your blessing, Lord, on all Welsh people as we share with them in giving you thanks for their heritage of St David today. Bless their land, her people, her cities, her towns, her communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are ill, who are unwell, those who are awaiting results and tests uh, from medical um, consultations, and for all who are laid aside uh, by any kind of illness. Heavenly Father, be with those who face this day with pain, with sorrow, with hurt, be it physical or mental, or even spiritual. Lord, be with them, be their source of comfort, be their guide, and give them that assurance that you are truly with them, and that you will see them through the time that they are experiencing now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we pray for ourselves. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the key moments that we've experienced in our own lives that have drawn us closer uh, to faith in, in, in that relationship with you. Be it people we've met or situations we've been in or uh, meetings or whatever it's been, Lord, we thank you for those key moments of faith for us. And we pray your blessing on us this day as we go into the day that you have made, that uh, we will be led by you and guided by you with whatever comes, both the expected and the unexpected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let's bring all our thoughts and prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. We pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now to the collect for the day, on this day before Ash Wednesday. We pray. Holy God, you know the disorder of our sinful lives. Set straight our crooked hearts and bend our wills to love your goodness and your glory. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so the Lord bless us and preserve us and keep us from all evil. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I pray you have a good day and a good week ahead as we go on into Lent. And I look forward to being with you this time next week. Every blessing. Goodbye.